I have a 2004 Chevy all-wheel drive Astro van. Now the thing about this van is it's got a lot of differences obviously compared to the two-wheel drive. And right now I'm just going to talk about the motor mounts. It's a major friggin' issue. <laughs> I replaced my mounts last year uh, when I was ignorant to how these things work and how they're manufactured and what makes them different from the two-wheel drive version. <clears throat> and uh, two days after I had the new ones put in, the motor sagged back down. And my issue at that time was that the axle was rubbing. Actually, the oil pan was coming down on the passenger side and slightly rubbing the axle. So my fix for it at that time was just to shim the mount from the axle down from the frame like about a quarter of an inch. And that worked. 12,000 miles, no problem. I recently did some crazy stuff uh, driving and I started getting this really bad noise and a lot of you have it. it sounds horrible. And what it is, is it's the lower pulley of your motor hitting the steering linkage, the center link on your steering linkage. If you're hearing this crazy grinding noise when you cut the wheel, mostly for me it's in reverse and normally when it's on a grade, or even if I pull up into a driveway sometimes and cut the wheel, I'll hear it a little bit. It goes away. Um, your motor's sagging. And uh, I do a lot of my own work on the van, but I brought it to a place where, I, where I've had guys do work for me and I trust them and they're good guys here in LA and in Culver City. Ronnie's Car Pros, good guys. We, uh, we put the vehicle up on a lift and put a screw jack stand underneath the motor. And uh, before I did it, I said, hang on a second. And I adjusted the fan blade so it was down low. You know, the shroud is hard mounted to the frame. And that blade was just about touching. And every once in a while I get a funny, when I hit the brakes and I'm at a stop, I'll get a little rattle and I think it's hitting. So we lifted the motor and it went from practically touching to where I can get over two fingers underneath the fan blade. So clearly that motor can move, and it is moving, with the crappy aftermarket engine mounts. <clears throat> the thing is, they don't sell the part anymore. It's not made anymore. They sell it, but it's wrong. And I don't care where you go, any computer system, uh, what it's going to tell you is that the mounts for the two-wheel drive and the all-wheel drive are exactly the same part number. And they're not. I found my original mounts. Thank God they were original. And uh, here they are. This is your passenger side, this is your driver's side, and if you look at those bushings inside the cage, you're going to see that that bushing has slid back towards the back of the vehicle. About a quarter of an inch or so. i got to put some calipers on that. Now, one of the things I'm going to point out to you right now, this is the passenger side. These aren't mounted flat. You know, it's funny, when you take them out of the box and you look at them, you land on a flat surface, you're thinking if you wanted to lift the motor, you put a plate under there, it would lift it up. Theoretically, if you put a plate under, it would kind of give you a little height. But really, they're mounted like this on an angle. And if you look, see that space here? You see there's no space here? This bushing has deteriorated over time, and the weight of the motor has pulled it down towards this part of the cage. That's what lowered the motor on that side of my truck. This is the driver's side, and if you look, there's still a gap underneath that bushing on that side. Yeah, very important. <laughs> Something to think about. So, they're mounted like this inside the vehicle on an angle. All right, you got me? You heard me? <laughs> now, there's a company called Prothane and they make a polyurethane bushing kit. That's what that looks like. You see the shape of that and right away your brain's going, oh son of a bitch, that's going to fill up all the space inside the cage. That is correct. That's what it will do. It's shaped to fit in that cage. Now this cage looks kind of tight, so I'm likely going to have to take a belt sander to this or whatever and shape it a little bit to fit it in there. When I do that, I will make sure to adjust this bushing so it's back in the correct alignment spot for the all-wheel drive vehicle. Okay, the kit also comes with some nuts and bolts. The idea is you drill out these holes here, cage separates, and then you can go ahead and shape this, fit it in there correctly, and then bolt it back together. When I do that, I'm going to use some polyurethane uh, epoxy or something to kind of lock it into place. 
One of the things I want to point out, these being the originals, this one, you won't be able to read it here. I'll, I'll show you in a second, but there's a, a part number here. And on this one, it's, it's located here on the driver's side. It's right there. You can screenshot this if you like. Those are your part numbers per side. If you could somehow find them somewhere in some old dealership someplace, that would be awesome to get the originals. Even if you can get the originals, I suggest that you wedge something in these spaces on either side of the bushing. Uh, I'm a woodworker. I design and build custom furniture for a living. I'm pretty stinking good at it. <laughs> Mike Z Design. Check it out. Oh, by the way, I did a video on Instagram. My Instagram is Mike Z Design. A quick note about the Instagram. If you're easily offended, <laughs> you got TDS or something, you might not like it. <laughs> so, sorry. But if you scroll through, you'll see some videos and pictures of the Astro Man. And there's a video where you're looking at the undercarriage of the vehicle, and I'm going in reverse, and I'm coming into the driveway, and you'll hear that pulley hitting. So if you look for that, uh, you'll be able to see it. You'll find that's probably your issue as well. Anyhow, back to this. So, I didn't have these. I took these out, and I left these with a friend of mine who builds custom parts for Jeeps and VWs. I was going to have him make me a custom set of mounts, because I incorrectly thought that these were aftermarket mounts. I thought that that bushing had slid back in there. I didn't inspect it enough, and I didn't know enough about it at the time. Since then, I've personally handled at least eight different manufactured, from different companies, motor mounts for this vehicle. They're garbage. Now, I also wrongly thought that the good ones were the ones that had rivets, like this one. Now, this is a Napa part. This is the best mount I've found out there. I would actually use this mount. I would fill in the space on either side of the cage, between the mount and the cage. And it's a pretty good heavy-duty piece of steel. I found this. I went looking around for a match. I could not find a match. I called Napa all over the country. I had friends send them to me. I got four sitting in front of me right now. So you could use this and get away with it if you could find the heavy-duty one. Drill out the rivets, put this in, or even just slide this bushing back and then shim between the bushing. I think you'd be okay with that for a while. Here's another Napa one. You can see the difference. Thinner cage, smaller bushing, more of a garbage kind of rubber, you know. It's also knocked over on the ends up here, so you, if you see that, you know you don't have an original. There's another one. It's also another Napa. Uh, or I think it's AutoZone. Look at this garbage. Look at that cage. Look how thin that is. You put this in your truck, first thing that's going to happen is the weight of your motor is going to bend that cage. Total garbage. Can't believe they even sell it. If you put these in your vehicle and it sags again instantly, because it will, they should be responsible for paying for it, selling this crap. Here's another one. This is another Napa. Again, skinny cage. Decent bushing, though, in this one. One of the reasons I can tell is that the bushing has uh, some things cast into it, which is kind of kooky. If you see that, you know, it usually denotes a better quality product. At least that's what I've found in life. So that's the story. If you still have your original mounts, keep them, drill them out, separate them, either get another bushing, if you can find a decent bushing in one of these other mounts, buy it, take it apart, and keep your old cages because they're better, but you can go with the pro thing. The pro thing is like 82 bucks with tax and shipping and everything else that comes out. It's like 100 bucks by the time you get it, 90 something dollars. You can give it a shot. I think it's going to work. I hope this has been helpful. I know it's a hassle. Uh, if you've got an all-wheel drive Astro van. And it, I'm specifically talking about the 04, by the way. The last three years of Astro, they, they got rid of them. They stopped making them in 05. 03, 04, and 05 are interesting because they upgraded the vehicle. They put 16-inch, six-lug wheels, four-wheel disc brakes. The suspension's a little upgraded. I think they even did something with the transmission. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, but it's a... Astro van is a funny thing. People call it a minivan. Those of us who have them, we call it the van that can because we know that vehicle is built on a truck chassis. There's a reason why workmen all over the country use these things and they're still on the road. They're heavy, they're trucks, they're heavy duty trucks. They just happen to be a van. Anyhow, again, hope this helps. And uh, if you have any information on this, if you've done this, gone through this, you got a better idea, let me know. By the way, one last thing, I've got some steel plate. 
I'm going to trace out these bottoms and make my own custom plates. I got them in eighth inch, three sixteenths, and quarter inch. I'm going to play with it. But I'm thinking, because the mount sits on an angle, it's about what it sits like inside the vehicle. I'm thinking it might be smarter just to make a plate that goes over these, underneath these two holes and just lifts it that way. Now that might give me more height rather than the whole plate. I'm not sure. If you have a better idea, let me know. Again, I hope this has been helpful. Have a good day.